when two of the most renowned U.S. engravers got together and collaborated on a commemorative coin for the 1893 Columbia Exposition in Chicago, well, you'd think it would have been a home run. But instead, the coin meant nothing but controversy and scorn. We're going to talk about it next, so stay tuned. Well, how you doing, YouTube? Welcome to another edition of the Silver and Gold Stack Attack, episode number 82. As always, I'd like to thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day to check out the new video, and if you'd like to help support this channel, then why not click on that thumbs up, drop a comment down below, or subscribe if you haven't already done so. All of that really helps promote the channel, and you know I appreciate the support. So, in 1892, two of the best engravers the U.S. Mint had got together to collaborate on a coin that would be considered the first commemorative ever issued in the United States. And it was going to be for the uh, Chicago World Fair, uh, otherwise known as the Columbian Exposition. Um, you'd think getting these two designers together would have produced an amazing coin, and to some aspect it did, but unfortunately the public didn't see it that way. Not only was it expensive at twice the face value of 50 cents, but the design elements themselves caught a little bit of scorn. So without further ado, let's get into the story. So the Colombian half dollar is a coin issued by the Bureau of the Mint in 1892 and 1893. The 1892 version was the first U.S. commemorative coin ever minted, and it was issued to raise funds for the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition, and also to mark the quadricentennial of the first voyage to the Americas of none other than Christopher Columbus, uh, whose portrait is on the obverse. Colombian half dollar was actually the first American coin to depict an historical person. Uh, on the obverse side of the coin, there's a bust of Christopher Columbus, and on the reverse is an image of his famous ship, the Santa Maria, above two hemispheres. You see the date 1492 inscribed on the reverse side of the coin, which is the date that Columbus arrived in the New World. Now, whether or not he was actually the first is a controversy made for another day. Over the course of two years, some 5 million pieces were struck, with 950,000 dated 1892 and the remainder made in 1893. Unfortunately, this amount would far exceed the actual demand, so half of them were melted right off the bat. The coin didn't sell as well as they hoped, and only 358,645 were sold at the premium price of $1 to outside sales and at the World Columbian Expo itself, which took place in Chicago. Uh, the remaining supply were actually released into circulation, where they remained till about the 1950s. So as, as far as supply goes, these aren't considered insanely rare, but you know, they wouldn't be considered prevalent either. Uh, the history behind the coin is what draws collectors to it. We'll go over that in just a minute, but let's look at uh, some of the specs first. Alright, stats on this coin. The type is a commemorative half dollar. Years 1892 and 1893 they were minted face value is 50 cents. Composition, 90% silver and 10% copper. Actual silver weight is 0.36169 ounces. Uh, total weight, 12.5 grams. And current silver bullion value, right around $8.07 with today's spot price of 22.34 an ounce. Each coin was minted in Philadelphia and there is no mint mark on any of the coins. Um, of the 950,892 coins minted, and around 4,052,105 half dollars were coined with the date 1893, including 2,105 reserved for assay, uh, and presumably destroyed, uh, with all the competing souvenirs offered during the Depression year, sales were predictably poor. <laughs> And a total of 2,501,700 coins dated 1893 were actually returned for melting. Uh, it's estimated that there are currently 1,500,000 plus 1893s, and possibly less than the original 950,892 coins currently on the loose. So the 1892 is the one you'd want to find due to it being the first commemorative and the lower availability over the 1893. 
Now, one major, major reason for the lack of sales was that while the fair was open, the economic panic of 1893 began, which was one of the worst depressions in the nation's history. Uh, to be honest, 50 cents could make a difference between a family eating or starving uh, at a time when the average visitor to the fair spent about $1.18. Fairgoers just weren't motivated to exchange a dollar for a 50 cent piece, and those who had actually bought the Colombian half dollars at the fair before the crash were often forced to spend their souvenirs anyway. Now, for this coin, it was a collaborative effort uh, on the part of two all star mint engravers uh, who both created one side of the uh, design elements. Charles Barber, whose popular work included the Liberty Nickel and Barber Silver Coinage designed the obverse with the bust of Columbus and if you look above the B in Colombian you'll see a tiny B engraved on Columbus's shoulder that was where he left his mark on this one and George T Morgan whose most famous coin is the Morgan silver dollar designed the Santa Maria on the reverse now here's where the real fun starts this coin met with controversy, not only over double the price of the face value, but of the design elements as well. The Philadelphia Ledger suggested if it were not known in advance whose vignet adorns the Colombian souvenir half dollar, the average observer would be undecided as to whether it was intended to represent Daniel Webster or Henry Ward Beecher. The Boston Globe noted the first view of the new Colombian souvenir coin inevitably leads to expression of regret that Columbus wasn't a better looking man. Youch. And the Galveston Daily decided that at first blush the ship seems to be on wheels but closer examination shows that the two wheels are the uh, eastern and western hemispheres. The ship seems to be surrounded by a herd of porpoises but this might have been meant for waves. <laughs> Brutal. Now, Barber was known to be quite defensive at times, so when James W. Ellsworth, who was the chairman of the World's Fair Commission, clipped an article criticizing the new coin and sent it to Barber, well, Barber responded angrily with a five-page rebuttal, suggesting that the Chicago newspapers not print the opinions of people who display a deplorable amount of ignorance. Go get them. And there you have it. You know, when it comes down to it, it's kind of unfortunate that this coin has a convoluted history behind it because, I don't know, in my opinion, I, it really is a nicely designed and collectible coin. Uh, if nothing else, the history, disappointment, and controversy behind it kind of make it one that you would want to consider adding to your 90% collection if you're so inclined. Who knows? You might be holding one of the original coins that were sold at the Chicago Fair itself. Anyway, that is going to close it out for episode number 82. If you made it this far, kudos to you. I appreciate it. Uh, I'll catch up with you in the next video, but until then, hell, I know you know what to do. Damn right. Get stacked. That being said, I am out of here. Stay safe. Be well. Peace, people.